Hey everyone, it's Tira with Red Mason Bees. As promised, we're gonna go take another sneak peek at our baby bees to see what they're doing five days after the last time I did the video. If you missed our first video, I will link it down below so you can take a look at it of what the first stage of our bee process was in um, mid-June. And today it's five days later, so we're gonna take a quick look and see what's going on now. Have they formed cocoons? How long does it take them to go from the larvae state to the cocoon state? So we're gonna take a look at that. But before we do, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about solitary bees. Um, when I first became a host, I had no idea what a mason bee was, or a leafcutter bee, or even what the word solitary bee meant. Well, it means what it means. Solitary, alone, by themselves. They don't work in a hive. Every female solitary bee lays their own eggs, gathers their own foods, find their own nest. And most solitary bees, 90% of the bee population are solitary bees. And they, most of them live in the ground. Some will find natural holes. Um, leaf cutter and mason bees do not chew wood. That's a big question we get all the time. They don't chew wood. Those are the carpenter bees. Um, mason um, use mud and leaf cutter bees use tiny little pieces of leaves that doesn't damage the, the plant um, to build their nests. And you can look at our blog um, to look at some of those images and pictures. But solitary bees are incredible pollinators um, that don't have a hive to protect, so they're not aggressive, they don't sting, they just are go about their business pollinating. Um, so on this pollinator week, which we are still in, I um, wanted to share a little bit about solitary bees because not many people know about them. And I wrote a blog post early on when I first became a host to talk to talk about what I learned um, as being a first uh, new bee host. So I'll post that down below as well. Um, but yeah, let's go take a look and see what's happened five days after we opened up our bee block. Okay, let's go. All right, let's take a look inside and see what's going on with our baby bees five days later. You can see that these mason bees have plugged up each hole with their mud that protects their babies inside. All right, let's take a look. Oh my gosh. You guys, there's already cocoons forming. Only five days after our first video, they have spun a silken cocoon. Oh, there's a couple of larvae still. Wow, that's fascinating. And only five days. So these silken cocoons are super hardy and durable. And in the fall, once they've all spun their cocoons, that's when you'll send your mason bees back to us. We'll let you know. Um, follow our, if you don't get our newsletter, make sure you go and, and in your spam box, make sure it's info at rentmasonbees.com. So you make sure you get all the newsletters that we're sending you. Um, we'll also keep everyone up to date on Facebook. But this is what's happening with your babies right now. The cocoons are starting to be formed. You know, I'm curious to see what's going on in a couple of these other cells. Let's see. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Oh, ah, it's sticky. All right. Oh, whoa, 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 look. There is a whole cell, a whole row of cocoons. Mud cocoon, mud cocoon. Ah, those are pollen mites. These are very, very harmful to our mason bee population. Um, it's, this is why it's so important, you guys. Oh, more pollen mites. It's so important to clean your mason bee blocks every year. Um, I know a lot of people like to drill holes in wood and raise mason bees that way, but you're not able to clean out all the predators that can, can really harm your mason bees. Um, what pollen mites do is they just sit there and in the spring when the mason bees hatch full grown, they crawl through the chamber, they have to crawl past the pollen mites, and then the pollen mites attach themselves to their back. Um, I'll post some links down below so you can see what pollen mites look like on your mason bees. Um, but this is why, you guys, this is why you rent with us. You don't have to worry about this. We clean all the predators out of every single nesting block and protect our mason bees all winter long. Um, so this is 
please, it's so important to clean your mason bees every fall. Um, you've got to get rid of these predators because these can multiply and really, really harm our solitary bee populations. Um, but sorry to put this the de the downer stuff down, but more than anything, this is just fascinating that these cocoons have already formed five days later. Oh, this is amazing. There's even some up, up on the top. All right, here we go. Okay, wow, I can't believe that they've already formed cocoons only five days after we saw them in their larvae state. That's pretty amazing how fast they did that. Um, anyways, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the pollen mites that we found. Um, oh, pollen mites are nasty. They cling to the mason bees, they um, can't fly, and then they eventually kill them, they die. And so it's so important every year to clean your mason bee nesting blocks. It's really, really important. I know a lot of people like to drill holes in the side of logs or use bamboo tubes. Those two types of nesting materials are the worst nesting materials for mason bees because you can't pull them apart and harvest and clean the cocoons and sterilize the nesting blocks every year. If you rent from us, that's what we do for you. You don't have to do any of that when you rent from us. I'll, I'll link the video down below. You can see our cleaning process. It's pretty fascinating how we harvest and clean millions, I'm not kidding, millions of cocoons a year. Um, we have this huge light board that we handpick um, the, the non-viable bees out of, you can tell. I'll post it, like I said, in the video down below. But for those that like to raise mason bees on their own and have their own bee populations, please it's so important to harvest and clean your cocoons every year a lot of people say oh i don't have any problems with my mason bees i've been doing it for years i never clean them it is to the point where once they start getting pollen mites it will decimate and your whole mason bee population could die in the matter of three to five years so you you might be doing a lot with your mason bees but if you're not cleaning them every year it's not a good thing in the long run. So please do that. Um, I'll post lots of links down below on the importance of cleaning. There's a lot of really great articles that other people have written about the importance of cleaning your mason bee nesting blocks. Um, but yeah, so today was really fun to go see that five days later, our baby bees are now forming cocoons. And in the fall is when you'll ship them back. Don't worry, I'll let you know when that is. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions for us, let us know. And if you haven't gotten your leaf cutters, next week is our last week, we're gonna be sending them out. So get those done as soon as possible if you still want them. And yeah, thanks for tuning in today. Bye.